Northampton is a, oh, it's a small place, but it's getting bigger. Rocky is a pretty good place. The good thing about living in Rocky is that you know a lot of people. I reckon it's good with like a lot of sport and activities here. All my family's here and I've been brought up here. Whenever you go somewhere, you usually see someone you know. Mackay is four hours from Townsville and three from Rocky. Everyone's just like a family. It rains a lot. Even though it's like a regional town, we still have the same opportunities as somewhere like a big city. It's good, it's really hot, and um, but it's good because there's like a lagoon and that to cool down. I've lived here all my life, so I should know something about it. Um, I think it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. You've got the barrier reef on one side and you've got the rainforest on the other. You could ask for more. The best things are going away and playing for my hometown and representing Rocky. I love the challenges with hockey, um, how you got to use your mind, your head, you know, with everything you do, skills, you got to think before you do. I'm coming in seeing everyone every week. Oh, I'd actually like to like go to state, but yeah, it's not, hockey is not going to be one of my main things. This year I am hoping, aiming for, to make the under 21s Australian country team and the Queensland under 18s. I'd like to achieve hopefully one day to play for the Australian team. I'd like to get as far as I can in hockey and hopefully one day make Australia because it would be like an honour to represent my country. I would like to get into a Queensland side but yeah I, I, do, I do play a lot of other sports so I'm just in it mainly for like the fun. This year I hope to get into the under 21 uh, Queensland side and that's it at the moment. <laughs> this year I've made under 21's Australian team and I went to Fiji for that. Um, I've been to um, Singapore two years now for the same um, competition. Um, I've represented Cre Queensland. I'd like to still be playing when I'm 60. That's pretty much all and do well in Singapore, of course. Um, the Indigenous team, this is the first time it's going over, so yeah. When I went away for Rocky, um, I was really determined to make Queensland, but my coach told me if I didn't make Queensland, there's usually selectors there who pick some Indigenous girls to go to a training camp. All I remember is Scott, a coach, ringing me up, asking if I want to try out for the Indigenous teams. Well, I was out shopping one day and I got a text message from um, my coach saying, congratulations, I made the team. And I went home and I told mum to check her emails and she, like we saw that I'd been selected and I was really happy. Oh, I was really happy, <laughs> you know, represented the Indigenous side. Yippee! <laughs> um, I almost cried. <laughs> I was ecstatic, yes. It was very good news to hear that, yes. Wrote on Facebook, status update. <laughs> I saw on Facebook that Jocelyn had written about it and then I was like to Mum, well, Jocelyn got in, Mum's like, well, yeah, so did you. Yeah, I'm really excited, like, yeah, to play against other people from different countries. Singapore is like entering another world. It's just hectic over there. Um, with the hockey, it's non-stop. It's a lot faster than um, the like 11 a side game. Um, it's more competitive, like um, it's on grass as well. This will be my first trip overseas. I know I'm gonna be nervous when I, with the first game, but once I'm on the field, I'll be pumped and ready to play. The best thing about it will be like the whole experience all together and being able to represent my indigenous culture. I'm more excited than afraid and I think it'll be the best experience to go over there and play for indigenous people. It'll be a really good experience with all the different cultures and I really like travelling. It will be a great experience. Yep, uh, plenty of opportunities and it will be a huge eye opener. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, I think with me being the oldest, I can help out the young ones, which I do really enjoy. We looked at the significance of Indigenous um, art in their culture, the significance of sport in the Indigenous culture, and we married them up. There was an artist at Dumaji who uh, was looking you know, to do some um, experimental work. We gave them a couple of hockey sticks, a couple of balls, and they started experimenting on it. We then published those, um, uh, that artwork and found that there was um, an interest in, in that, not just locally and not just in the Indigenous community, but 
um, across mainstream as well. We connected with the Cairns Tropical North Queensland TAFE, uh, who have an Indigenous Studies department of which art is part of that. And we started, I think in 1994, the first hockey art competition. 10 or 12 local artists from as far as way uh, as Torres Strait through to far north west Queensland participated in that. Um, those artworks were sticks and balls. The theme was um, connection with land and country. And those artworks uh, went across the world to uh, FIH in, um, in Europe. Uh, so they were in the Beijing Academy at the Olympic Games in Beijing, last uh, Olympic Games. And they've gone to Argentina and a lot of the top world countries as representation of Australia's connection with their Indigenous race. In school programs and um, active participation programs, we use it akin to like a message stick so we can pass it around. And that gives the connection across all the, uh, all the levels of the program. As a, as a career-wise, it's, it's opened a lot of doors. Um, coming into now getting um, Aboriginal art on sticks and going commercial, um, it's opened a lot of doors. So hopefully it'll open a lot of more doors to other artists. So. I do um, Aboriginal art. It's all airbrushing art. Um, I do some of my own designs and shirts and everything. Just, um, but I'm doing shirt design to um, support my art. Um, so going for grants and everything. So yeah, hopefully the close range will kick off. I think that's good. There should be more opportunities like this, and hopefully there'll be more. We can uh, it probably bring a bit more of the player out in them, um, giving the opportunity. Um, going overseas, well, you couldn't, you know, it's not like going down the end of Australia or anything, but going overseas, will hopefully, you know, it, you know, makes them a lot better player and gives them more experience and to know what they're going to look forward in the future if they keep going at it. Be strong at what you want to do. Um, I've always been a player. I'm a football player, so I think we I think have a big heart. I think that's what a lot makes a lot of players is have a big heart and have more determination and commitment. That's about it. Yeah. Jasmine's a very athletic um, player, fast. Um, she's fit. She's got very silky skills. Um, probably, if she needs to work on something, it's probably she's lacking a bit of confidence in herself. Um, but you know she's a very consistent player in club hockey, um, and she's made the under 18s, under 15 and under 18 squads in the last couple of years, but not managed to quite get to that final um, team. Chenille is a very very tough competitor. Um, she's a very good defender. Um, got good transferring skills. Um, also, she's also a good leader. A um, couple of rep sides that I've had her in my team. She's been the captain of the team and she leads by example. Um, probably this program, that um, the program that's running at the moment with, with the Indigenous girls, is actually helping her a great deal with just fine-tuning some of her skills. Um, but yeah, I think she's got all the good basic skills, just probably needs to work on improving um, with things like jinx and, and overheads and things like that just to take a game to the next level. Lucretia is, once again, she's very, very athletic. She's quick, she's also fit. And um, the thing about Lucretia is she knows how to score goals. Um, she, needs, she knows how to get in the right position. Um, I guess her main thing with her game is consistency because she can be on fire one day and the next day she probably is a bit quiet. Um, so it's just a matter of probably the mental part of her game that she needs to work on so that she can go out and perform consistently all the time rather than sort of good one game and the next game maybe a bit quiet. So Jocelyn's a striker, uh, she's got a lot of speed, um, she's got a really nice goal shot. Um, what she plays within the team, like I said, I think she'll bring some great speed to the team. Particularly we've tried to work on Jocelyn's um, receiving the ball, obviously that needed some attention but I think that's really come along in the last five to six weeks and obviously we've still got probably another four or five weeks before we go. So again, I see, we'll see you know, more improvement in that as well as her goal shooting. I think she's now improved in her goal shooting as well as um, has got a lot more variety of shots as well. Athena um, plays more of an attacking midfield uh, role, sometimes a defensive midfield. Um, so, you know, Athena's strengths are that she is very strong on the ball, um, she has a great work ethic um, and 
yeah, things she probably needs to work on. Again, is probably our receiving, um, consistency all over the park and just a little bit of concentration. Sam is, um, a, is a defender, okay. Uh, Sam is also very strong on the ball, strong hitter, uh, really strong tackler. Um, and again, probably things that Sam has need to work on is just being a little bit more consistent, um, being more involved in the play for longer periods of time. Um, again, Sam's improved in this in the last five to six weeks. Born in Melbourne, so the big religious sport down there was Aussie Rules. Uh, and then my family moved to Canberra uh, when I was only a young kid uh, and played Aussie Rules there, obviously. Got a little bit light and got injured one year and a, a mate of mine was playing hockey and he just lobbed at my place on Saturday morning and said, you want to come down and watch me? So uh, I went down uh, to a place called Southwall Park in Canberra at about minus three degrees to watch him and they were a player short. So I jumped on in uh, jeans and a big floppy jumper and that sort of stuff and succe successfully put the ball in the wrong net. So that was my introduction to hockey. You tend to gravitate to sports where your mates are um, and I, had a, I, had, I made a lot of good friends playing hockey and a lot of my, um, my friends um, were involved in the club that I ended up going to. Um, the school that I was involved with in Canberra was a very predominantly um, rugby union school and being a bit of a rebel, I didn't want to play rugby union and try, I mean, look at me, I mean, holy dolly, it's not as if I'm a front rower, so sort of with a weapon, hockey suited me. It's a lifetime sport, um, you know, we have young people running around here at Cairns Hockey at, uh, at five and six years of age and you know, if they want to be, they can still be playing at 75 years of age and, uh, and that's not something that you see common in other sports. Uh, I think the fact that she's been appointed as captain will do calm and good. Uh, you know, I, th I think taking that leadership role and I suppose thinking about what she's doing before she actions it uh, and being, being aware of the fact that there will be consequences for the actions that she takes will be good for Carmen. Um, on field, Carmen has developed dramatically over the past 18 months or so. Um, she's, uh, she's very, very strong in, I suppose, most parts of the game. Her game sense is, uh, is solid and that's probably what puts her above a lot of other players around her. Um, as far as you know, where we are with Carmen at the moment and in, in her development type thing, we're very, very much working on the aerial side of her game now. Uh, the ability to throw overheads um, and not just 50, 60 yard overheads, but the short overheads just to get out of trouble and whatever the case may be. Uh, we're also doing a lot of work with Carmen at the moment on her, um, I suppose, on, on her ability to try different things under pressure situations. Uh, she became a little bit robotic for a while and she was doing the same thing under pressure. So after a while, other opposition teams were reading what she was going to do all the time. So we're, we're trying to change the way she thinks about pressure and, and the way she approaches pressure. And pressure is just another challenge to throw a good pass. If you want to find out the value of a player and you want to find out the value of the person, send them on an overseas trip as part of a team. Uh, as an individual, you can go away and have holidays, do what you like. As a team, you're responsible for other people. Uh, and Shania will benefit from that. Um, she'll benefit from being part of that environment where it's very, very much a team uh, a decision-making process. Uh, Shania's strengths are, are definitely her speed. Uh, she's very, very quick. She's quite deft on the ball. Um, I, I have often described Shania as sort of panther-like. Um, she's quite well balanced. Um, and it, you know, very rarely do you see Shania in a situation where she's unstable and can't do something with the ball or, or her opposition player. Yeah. Working a lot on Shanae's strength at the moment. Um, she's only light, so you know, we need to, uh, off-season stuff, get her a little bit bigger. Uh, and if she's going to stay where she is, which is a strike forward, um, we're doing a lot more work on just a variety of goal shots. Goalkeeping is a little bit different to field players in the fact that you'll talk to a goalkeeper about an incident in the game, either at half-time or after the game, and they say, look, I just don't remember it. So treating goalkeepers is differently because it's all reactions, and they, a lot of the time they don't remember what they've done or what they're doing or what, even what they're about to do. So um, Jonesy's really developed her ability to clear the ball in the last few years. Um, she was probably going to ground uh, a little bit too often, so uh, she, we, she's done a lot of work on that. Um, we've done a lot of work with Kiona in that sort of mid, in, uh, how do I describe it to the layman, in that midfield, in that mid-range area, so in between sort of knees and hips um, was a bit of a black spot for Kiona, so we've worked really hard on that. She's doing that well and also the ability to, um, I suppose, guide and instruct the team from the back, uh, she's, she's you know, improved greatly there as well not just older, but more experienced and more mature. Um, yeah, it's very, very handy to have that sort of a person in the net at sixes. It happens so quickly, sixes. Um, you know, I've seen athletes go in and have a shot at goal and 
and, and the, the goalkeeper save it. And they're slapping themselves on the thigh saying, oh, I wish that had gone in. And all of a sudden they hear the ball rattle on the backboard down the other end of the field. It's three and a half seconds from end to end. So she'll, she'll be handy and she'll be a great leader.